I want to get a new network switch. I want to get one that is going to have 16 ports. That'll cover sure. me. Yeah, I've got 14 NEMS Linux servers online right now that I'm having to, you know, patch in and then unplug when they're not in use. Sounds like 16 you need more will get than me by. 16 then, because you're going to be adding. More. Well, remember, I'm adding. I want to add 16. Oh, yes. So I'm going to supplement what I already have. Right. Okay. With another 16. So a 16 port switch would do. That'll keep you real well. the end of the year. Yeah, at least. <laughs> so but they're 50 bucks, anyways, for like a you know 10 over 100 cheap, um, good um, switch. All right. Um, you can get gigabit switches. That's fine. But for what I'm doing, uh, 10 over so 100 is going to be fine. Fast Ethernet is great. Um, so I have one, Jeff. All right. That was given to me a long time ago because... I was going to say, that looks old. It, no, it's a, this is a, a DSS 16 Plus from D-Link. It's, no, it's just a, it's, a rack mount switch. It's it not, doesn't look current like this year. Oh, we didn't, like, unbox it? Yes. Yeah, I see. No, but it, it was given to me because it doesn't work. It doesn't do a thing. You plug it in, and it just doesn't even power on. Really? Yeah. So... Let's throw it out, right? Let's put that in the landfill and see if it decomposes. Most people do. Yeah. But do we need to do that? No. Should I just not. go to Amazon and spend 50 bucks plus tax plus shipping, whatever else? Oh, fix it. Or should we see if it's worth tinkering? I feel like I should blow it up right now and say, yeah, throw it out. I'm going to skip over here. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and here I am. Ta-da! Okay, so this is just a 16-port dead switch that doesn't work whatsoever. doesn't even fire up. But the question that we want to answer is, hey, am I, and I'm using me as the example, but are we, are you and I, capable of just making it go? Is there something we could do to make this work? Let's jump in here. And there you have it. That is the internal look of a D-Link DSS-16+. See, Jeff, that was an unboxing of sorts. <laughs> so okay. we're going to get a quick look at the circuitry here. So the switch itself, everything looks preem and proper. Oh, Robbie's been in there before, you can tell. Um, so looking at the caps, these are capacitors. Everything looks great. Yep, everything looks perfect. It looks brand new inside, doesn't it? It does. No Not dust. a speck of dust. Let's get over to this unit over here. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is obviously... What do, you, what do you suspect it is? Yeah, it's the power. This is the power supply. So the first thing that I notice when I check this out, Jeff, capacitor here is good. Yeah. These two capacitors have ruptured. Oh, look at that, yeah. Can you see that? Why would that happen? Power overload? Maybe they didn't have... Yeah, it. precisely. I mean, if there's too much power going through a capacitor, the electrons are going to shoot across from plate to plate instead of holding on, on the plate. They're not, it's not going to take a charge. Instead, it's going to... The, the, the electricity is going to flow through it and burst the capacitor. Right. So these two capacitors are dead they aren't going to operate and it's not going to work. So let's see what we need to do here. Let's pull this apart. And I'm just going to, this is the ground screw here. You want to be careful when you're doing this because remember capacitors do hold a charge. So I have not had this plugged in in a long time, but I'm still going to be very careful with those capacitors because they could hold uh, a pretty good voltage in there that could give you a pretty good shock. I mean, a, a bigger one than this um, could be deadly. So please be very, very careful. Keep yourself grounded and know kind of what you're doing. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Just know kind of what you're doing is a good start. You can tell them you heard that here. Get all the screws out so I can... Basically, I'm just removing the power supply. So the temptation tends to be, and, and an option is, in fact, that we could replace the power supply. Because that would that, be the easiest route. That would fix it, Jeff. And if you send it away to a repair shop that's going to charge you probably as much as I could buy it for, 50 bucks, then that's probably, you know, that could be what they're going to do. But this is literally everything else looks perfect. So I've inspected the capacitors and resistors and everything else. Everything looks fine, except for those two ruptured 
capacitors. Right. So I have discharged these, but you would never touch the contacts here because, as I said, they could have um, electricity still within the capacitor. We're going to be looking at that next week. Don't you worry. I'm going to show you how to discharge those safely. Um, in the meantime, um, these capacitors being burnt out, what I need to do is I need to look at the capacitor itself, get really, really tight in here, and you're going to see a couple of things. First of all, the voltage is 10 volts. Okay, that's important. We don't want a 48 volt capacitor. And it's 1000 UF. So those are the capacitors that I need in order to replace this. So $50 to replace the switch. On Amazon, five of these particular capacitors, 10 volt, 1000 UF, are going to be $8. Wow. $8. So. Tune in next week. We're going to see if my mad soldering skills <laughs> is going to be enough to save this switch. One week later. So over here, uh, we've got all the parts out just like we did last week. And you see, I got the... Uh, the capacitors in from Amazon. These are a dollar sixty per capacitor. So we're going to find out if this is going to be worth our while. Here is the power supply, Jeff. You remember me taking this out? Yes. Yeah. First thing I want to do is I want to check if there is a charge on these capacitors. So um, the old capacitors. I mean, they're only ten volts, but we're, so we're basically doing this for. Uh, you know, you may be dealing with three hundred volt capacitors. In our case, okay, they're giving, they're registering DC volts of zero. There is a big capacitor on here. Let's check that one. And it registers 0 0.002 volts. I'm not going to get a shock from that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I mentioned that I might want to show you how to discharge um, a capacitor. At 10 volts, you're, you're probably not going to get a shock from that anyways, and you could probably short circuit it and, just, uh, and it will discharge safely, uh, especially because of the fact that I'm not going to be reusing these capacitors. I'm actually going to be pulling them, so I'm not too concerned about, uh, about them. It, but you may want to look on YouTube. There are better uh, people than me to teach you that. I need to make sure, because I'm going to be doing desoldering, I need to make sure my soldering iron is reasonably hot. So a little bit hotter than when I'm soldering, especially because I'm going to be using a, a wicking, um, like a desoldering wick, in order to remove this solder. I've got my helping hands here, and I'm curious if this is going to help <laughs> me or hinder me. <laughs> it looks a little bit like <laughs> I probably by name, be holding too well by right name now. alone it should be helping <laughs> you would you would expect so so oh, okay, all right so do I des desolder now do I start heating things up no <clears throat> what I need flux. to do first yeah Jeff you hit it we need some rosin paste flux so what this is going to do this is like a little paste that I'm going to I'm going to put on the solder joints I need to put this on before I desolder as well as soldering because this is going to protect those solder joints from uh, from the heat in, in such a way that it, you know I'm still going to be able to use those solder joints. So, it, you know, we're d we're dumbing it down here today because I'm dumb when it comes to this <laughs> kind of stuff. I'm learning. Are, are but you using a stir stick? I am using a stir stick, <laughs> <laughs> and that that leads me to my next point, Jeff. You can purchase some amazing tools for applying flux. Or you can run to your local coffee shop and grab a coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what? You don't need anything fancy for this, <laughs> folks. And in fact, I'm using my hands here. You might want to be careful here. I've got a 400-degree soldering iron. Uh, I'm going to be pretty quick with this, so I'm, I'm not afraid that I'm going to burn myself. But uh, this is probably not the wisest way to do it. Uh, if I can admit you're that. from a health and safety company, stop yeah. watching. <laughs> stop watching now. Yeah. <laughs> So what I need to do is, uh, with the flux on there, I'm, I'm heating up those soldering joints to pull off that capacitor. So that's one of the dead capacitors. Okay. Um, easy peasy. That's what we looked at last week. And let's grab the other one on. And through the magic of television, I can actually speed this up a little bit for you. And there you go. Let's get a quick look at the capacitor itself. So that's blown. You can see how that's been burst. Yep. And that is a 10-volt, 1,000 microfarad capacitor. So I ordered the, the replacements off of Amazon at $1.60 each. They were $8 for five of them. And uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put those on there. So let's let's get some more uh, some more flux some more paste on there. Coffee flux. Now, Jeff, because we're working with flux and capacitors, does that make this a flux capacitor? Uh, you know what? I, I, I think, think it does. So. Excellent. <laughs> I, I really think it does. <laughs> this is a desoldering wick. Oh. And what this, uh, this is why I need my soldering iron uh, about 50 degrees hotter than if I was soldering, uh, because I'm actually going to remove the solder from those joints. So just by applying the heat to the wick, now it's actually pulling the solder out of that. And, and oh. wick that's is what it's so cool. Yeah. It just kind of sucks it right out of there. <laughs> so just give it a, a quick second. You can actually feel the, the solder turn to liquid underneath the wick, and, and that's when you can pull it away. That's awesome. There you go. So see those holes are wide open now. Get the, uh, the second set there from the, uh, from the other capacitor. There's two identical 10 volt capacitors that I need to re redo. You know, as you're just uh, pulling that solder off, Marshman doesn't like our Back to the Future joke. Oh, come on now. It was good. I thought it was good. <laughs> you know it was good. <laughs> this is some good TV right here. Yeah. You all know right. we're hilarious. So, <laughs> so have you removed all the solder now? Yes, the solder's gone. Here, let me show you, Jeff. Okay. So I'm just cleaning out the flux paste there, and you see those holes there? Yeah. Oh, so clean now job. it's nice and clean, right? Wow. But because I use the flux, it's not damaged. Right. So I'm going to, and notice I'm doing this in, in double time. I've got uh, two replacement capacitors here. Same thing, 10 volt, 1,000 microfarads, or as I said last week, UF, which I said just to be safe. And, and because that's what I ordered off of Amazon. You'll notice that it has a negative side and it's important to make sure that you get the uh, the polarity correct. And I'll show you a little bit. Of, I'll show you how. Obviously, I, I double checked that when I took off the other one. But notice the the minus sign yes. on the one side, and also the the leg. The shorter one is negative, and the longer one is positive. Okay. Is that just always? Well, not always. Sometimes they come. And they're not, it's not quite as obvious what huh. the polarity is, but you should have, I, I haven't, I, I think I've always seen them with the negative side. See how it's painted on there? Um, but the legs should be positive as longer. And I've just bent the legs a little bit to hold them in place for, for soldering. Oh, that makes sense. Smart. Yeah, it works. Tighten those up, make sure that they're in there good. And more flux. Nice. Flux capacitors. Looks so much like hair wax. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't apply like paint. <laughs> so just Clearly. heat up that flux a little bit. That's going to just, like, turn it into a liquid. There you go. And, and again, that just protects the joints and makes sure that um, you're not overheating the joints. And, and I don't know, it's some kind of magic. Um, and uh, it, does, it, it really helps to make sure the solder works really, really well. Mm -hmm. Though here, I'm not having quite as much success. Looking at the uh, tip of my soldering iron, um, it's kind of it's, it's kind of wound gunky. up on the end of the tip, which I want to avoid. Uh, so I'll just grab my, just like a dollar store wire cleaner there and uh, clean off the tip. You don't have, to, again, you don't have to buy the $30 uh, soldering component to, to clean off the tip of your soldering iron. No, you're starting to make this look really easy. Well, I'm trying, Jeff. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit better. I'm so I'm heating it up a I little bit, it. heating it up, heating it up, and then applying the solder and pulling up. And now we've got a good joint there. Let's heat it up, heat it up, heat it up, and then apply the solder. There we go. And nice. Right? Do the same thing on this one. And there we go. Perfect. All right. Okay. Now, I guess, you know, final quick little wipe there. Now, I only had some, some paper towel handy. You probably want to get some nicer cotton wipes or something like that. But there you go. There's, there's my that soldering job. Good. Much cleaner, right, Sasha? Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. There we oh go. Oh, my. Okay. Well so done. Now we're going to grab our, our snips here and get rid of the excess on the... Uh, capacitors there you know the legs of the capacitors beaut so if this works we've taken what would be a 50 dollar replacement 
and we've pulled this thing out of the landfill and for what just uh, just over three dollars the cost of a good cup of coffee we've replaced the capacitors and uh, and hopefully we're good to go now I've got some isopropyl 99.9 percent .9 pure alcohol this is just to kind of clean up that uh, residue of the flux that's been and that's applied not gonna, to the board it's not gonna hurt it no that won't hurt it Sasha okay. um, and that will actually just that's just a a cleaner, a solvent to clean off. Let's just get this open. It's a brand new bottle. So this is just going to clean off the flux a little bit. Again, I've only got paper towel handy. Uh, you want to have something a little better than that. I, I'll buy a couple of nice cloths in order to, to do my cleanup. But that'll just help to dissolve the, uh, the residual flux. And it's not going to be perfect with a paper towel, but it, it'll at least get the job done mm -hmm. for today. All right, let's get a look at that, see how that looks. All right, there we go. So the kind of the orange co discoloration, that's the flux itself. So I got to, you know, I could do a better cleaning job. But there you go. There's my capacitors installed with the correct polarity. Ha <laughs> ha. Soldered right on there. And my solder joints look just as good as the ones that uh, are on the board. So I'm happy about that. And uh, let's get doing some cleanup. Okay. All right, cleanup complete, and we are ready to go. That's the final product. There you are. Look at that. So beautiful brand new dollar <laughs> sixty capacitors <laughs> on my power circuit. So this is the transformer circuit that I'm reinstalling into the network switch. Now, should you have not checked to make sure that the uh, there was electrical current to make sure you did this right, or did how so, Jeff? Well, do you know, like, first when we checked to make sure that there was no charge or anything, is, should you, is there a way to check to make sure that the capacitor you used is valid? Oh, like that I made a good joint? Yeah. Well, I should be able to tell when I, like, I connected it, and I didn't damage the, uh, the, the like, where I was soldering it into on the circuit board. Right. And so I made good contact there, and I can tell that by visually looking. Okay. Um, so it should be good, but we'll find out. So let's put back together. Capacitors are in. Let's find out if it is actually successful. We're going to do that right after the break. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. Welcome back to Category 5 Technology TV. We have finished soldering the capacitors. We? we it was all me. I, it's a team effort. Come I was on. here cheering you on. Yeah, anyway, thanks, let's buddy. go back over to Robbie, see what he's got going on <laughs> at the solder right. table. Okay, okay, let's jump over to this. So I've got everything put together. I'm going to put the chassis back together here because I am believing in the job that I have done here today. Thank you, Marshman, for the blue smoke. It's not happening today. Come on. <laughs> I really... Come on. I, I, did a, I did a decent job. I, I, think, think, it, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. Okay. So there it is. It's all back together. Let's grab the power cable and moment of truth, let's throw 110 volts into this bad boy. Looking for the smoke. Uh -huh. Well, I put the case on so you're not going to see any smoke. Oh! oh! Huh. Oh, a light. Yay. we got the power. I see the light. All right, but no other lights are on because we have no Ethernet cables plugged in. Let's see if I can track down a hot Ethernet cable here. Yeah, there's one. <laughs> that was quick. To the back of the computer. <laughs> oh, through the magic of television, my friend Jeff. Uh, All right, let's plug it in. Let's see what, uh, what's going to happen here. All right. Click. And click. And number one is lit up. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, man. Ah, look at that. Let's move it around. Let's see if we've got a good 10 over 100 switch here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Five is lit up. Look at us. Look at how smart we are. Wow. Oh, 
Wow. The things that get us excited. I Lights. know. <laughs> hey, look at this. Well, you know why I'm excited here, Jeff? Because now you can use it for the studio? This was going to be... No, this is for my Raspberry Pis, for my Pine 64 boards. Look at that. This is This great. is for all my SBCs. I have 14 of them. Yeah, you need 16. <laughs> yeah, I really do. All right. Wow. That's exciting. I'm going to jump right back over. Um, so, I mean, you said it was, what, about $3 in parts? So, here's the thing, Jeff. This is it. So, $50 would replace this network switch. Right. Mm -hmm. And, sure, okay, that's what we're tempted to do. Or maybe, like, 20 to $40 I could replace the power circuit board um, that is built into that. And, mm -hmm. and then I could replace that. And I'd feel like, hey, it was a bit of a DIY job. Or... For $1.60 per capacitor on Amazon, awesome. uh, and it only took two days to arrive, and, yeah. and I can fix it myself, very potentially. Now, this was a very, very simple fix, and I was right. fortunate in this case that it happened to be a simple fix. Having removed the cover from it last week, I saw, you and I saw together. Yeah, it was just that, a small little yeah, board. Yeah, it was a small little board, and it was pretty obvious that there were two capacitors that were burnt out on that yeah. board. Yeah, the nice little bubble on the top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But isn't that often the case? Well, yeah. It quite often is. And so you take it to a repair shop, and you'll pay $100 or $200 to get something fixed. Or in this case, it's like, okay, well, it's only $50 to replace it. Let's just buy a new one. Mm -hmm. no. Well, for $3 and change, I bought the parts. And saved it from the landfill. And saved it from, that's it. I could replace it or I could, it, what I, but it would still, like, mm -hmm. that's not going to biodegrade. Right. Well, E-waste will recycle it, sure. But right. But even at the same time, just the time that it took to do that, it was probably less time than hopping in the car, heading to the store, picking out the model that you true. want to replace, yeah. coming back. Like, in that same time frame, like, if you just had the capacitor sitting around at home, yeah, uh, you know, you'd be like, oh, I... This is faster than going to the store. Absolutely. And actually, in the, in the chat, I was looking back at the chat um, last week. Marshman said, well, didn't you go to Say Al, and did they not have the capacitors? And it was exactly that. It's like, if I can sit down on Amazon right. and buy it for $1.60 a cap, and it'll be here two days later. And, right. and here we are. A week later, we've, we've Fixed made it. the repair. And that now all your SBCs so will be cool. happy. Yeah. You yeah. fixed two big things. I, I did it. <laughs> really? Uh, fix it. Uh, fix it, guy. Well, and, and you, can, you can laugh or you can be like, whoa, Robbie sucks at soldering. And whoa. so I, <laughs> this being you, this is your thoughts that I'm putting into your head. I can do this. I can take something <laughs> apart and I can figure out how to fix it. Right. And it's like, that is liberating. Sure it yes. is. That is exciting because I have a big old TV that's sitting here. Yeah. Jeff, you want to grab a sign of this? Here, hold on. <clears throat> Why don't I just do it this way? Oh, we we go. got a big old TV right here that was given to us for free. Yeah. Because its power supply has a burnt out what? Capacitor? Capacitor. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yay! That's a beast. That's yeah. heavy. But it's, <laughs> it's a free TV. But I have to buy a $1.60 capacitor for it. I don't know if and I think that. I can do it. I Patrons, think I can do we it. need your... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, don't. <it. laughs> we need to fix it. Um, so, I mean, all that to say, hey, we did it here live on the show, um, a little bit more than real time, but, uh, but it can be done. Hey, yeah. yes. I can do it. You can do it. Um, you just got to have the right tools. So a couple of things that I needed in order to make this repair happen. Of course, there's the $1.60 capacitors. Mm-hmm. You need to buy the right capacitors. Um, I wanted to have a soldering iron that I could adjust the temperature of. Now, we've reviewed that on our show before. You can go yes. to cat5.tv slash solder, and you'll be able to pick one of those up. They're really inexpensive, the one that I picked up. Uh, because I'm just a beginner. I don't need to invest in the $200 model. Right. I just need a entry level, like, let's get started, let's learn our way through, and, and let's tinker with some cheap stuff that I've got for free and, mm -hmm. and invest $3 and change in order to see if I can make it work. Mm -hmm. You need to have flux. You absolutely do. And I learned that here on the show because our community came together and bashed me to <laughs> death. 
are not using flux. With love. Yeah, it was it was for good intentions. Well, no. <laughs> He's um, still in therapy. They, yeah, there's a couple thumbs down on YouTube, and that's okay, because I'm learning, and that's that's all. Yeah, and, but and there's always those YouTube You have to have there. flux. That's going to help. Um, and then we've also, uh, we've got to have, uh, now I use lead-free solder, um, so you do have to have some solder as well. Um, I, I have that nice little mat that I'm mm -hmm. using, um, which basically protects any surface and prevents heat um, from, from getting uh, onto your table. Right. Um, and then I've got a helping hands, which helps me to hold the soldering iron while it's hot. Um, and also, in some instances, helps with, the, with this, like actually holding the circuit board or whatever right. you're working on. In this case, it was a little more of a hindrance than anything, but that's because I was working with a big clunky board. But um, really, remember that's... remember to have your 4K unboxing cam ready. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're that's, good. that's all you need. And then you will go viral, which I need your help to do. <laughs> exactly.